Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Offersen and on this channel here we do not use uh, any sort of filters and uh, today I have noticed that we are a little bit close up so maybe you can see my skin a little bit more uh, close up than you uh, normally can. So today we are going to look at a uh, sunscreen and uh, have I tried it on? Yes, I have tried it on and I will show you uh, some uh, pictures uh, of how it looks in various uh, lighting uh, later. But uh, which one are we actually talking about? Well, that would be good to know, wouldn't it? So it is this one here from uh, Vichy, so uh, Laboratoire Vichy. And uh, it is a capital Soleil, as they call it. So it is a, a, a sunscreen. It is a sunscreen, an SPF of 50 plus, as you can see on the front here. So something like this, why did I take it down from the shelf. Well, I was out shopping and then I saw something that said mattifying and I thought, well, I am pretty sure you would like to know about that because uh, these things here, they are not particularly cheap. So it is nice to see someone else demonstrating it if it actually works. So you don't have to find out that yourself. So uh, how uh, are we going to test this one here? Well, of course, I'm going to try it on my skin. So today I have just uh, washed my face uh, with a a face wash from um, CeraVe and that is uh, the one that is a, a hydrating uh, cleanser and after that I did not put anything on so uh, I will just uh, try uh, this one here just rough uh, onto my skin though normally you hear that it should be uh, put on top of uh, your moisturizer and stuff like that but I find that very rarely can you actually put a, a sunscreen on top of your moisturizer without it being way, way, way too much. Or some might say, no, no, it's not at all too much. Well, then I think you are maybe using a little bit too a little of uh, the sunscreen. And that is not a great idea because then you don't get uh, the SPF that you think you get. So, uh, of course, we will uh, use uh, this uh, little spoon here. And there is a one milliliter in that one. So that is actually when it is full, still not enough uh, as to what what I should use on my face and neck and ears, but my ears are not huge. So if you just uh, think that uh, something uh, like this and then uh, a little bit more, then it would be about 1.25 milliliters and then you are about where you should use uh, on uh, your uh, face, like my face, and I think my face is and quite average in size. So if uh, we uh, test it on here and uh, we just, of course, do uh, an unboxing, the box looks uh, like this. And on the inside, we have this one here. Voila, it looks uh, like uh, this. And they say it's a new one, but uh, how new it actually is, uh, I'm not quite sure. But I think it's relatively new. And I actually think uh, it's a new version of uh, one they had uh, previously, which we have spoken about before, which also was uh, mattifying for uh, the skin. Now, uh, these things here, they tend to be uh, a little bit uh, thick when they are uh, mattifying. And that is simply because uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, silica in it. And that uh, kind of like absorbs uh, moisture and, and oil. And and all these uh, sun fillers, they are basically oily or kind of like oily. Some of them are not, but they are powders, but uh, they uh, are dissolved in something that is oily. So uh, something like this is usually very oily. So when they use something like a uh, silica powder in it, then uh, it takes uh, the shine away. And uh, that is basically what they have done in this product here. They have used uh, a lot of uh, silica and uh, that is why um, it is a, a mattifying a sunscreen. But uh, what sort of uh, sun fillers are uh, in this product here? Well, it is a uh, a chemical uh, sunscreen but it's also uh, a physical sunscreen so there is a titanium dioxide in it as well and that is in the uh, nano form and I think it also is in the normal form because there's nano and then it just says uh, titanium dioxide uh, as well so kind of like both the forms I, I assume here so uh, this is a uh, mattifying and they say it is uh, with the green clay and that is also supposed to sort of like uh, make it a little bit uh, mattified it doesn't have a green color though and uh, then it has something called bifidus uh, extract and that is all uh, very well, well because it is something that is going to be really good and nice for your skin and all that sort of thing but you are not really uh, going to use a, a product like this because it does uh, a lot of nice things for your skin if you cannot bear to have it on your skin or if you're gonna look really really awkward because um, it might be that if you have a, a skin that is uh, a little bit not as light as my skin happens to be then uh, something uh, in here like the titanium dioxide will be visible uh, on your skin and maybe even it will be visible on my skin so um, let's have a, a look and uh, let's have a little uh, smelling of it because does this stuff actually smell is there a fragrance in it yes there is a fragrance in it so it is a uh, perfumed but uh, is it a very strong uh, perfume well 
if I had not looked uh, at the uh, ingredients list, I would not have known there was a perfume in it. I would just think that, oh yeah, that is how it smells, when they have not added any sort of fragrance. So I'm not quite sure how they chose uh, to put in the fragrance or how they chose the exact fragrance to put in because I really, I, I really can't smell it. Uh, it is more like a, kind of like, a, as I normally say, some sort of glue or like some sort of stuff you find in the um, DIY depot uh, department or something like that. So yeah, like I really would not have known there was a perfume in it. So if it is covering up something else, either it's doing a really bad job or it's doing a really good job and just in itself doesn't really smell that nice. It is not something I would go and say, yeah, I need that fragrance to kind of like, I want to smell like that. So I don't think it smells a lot. So how much uh, are we going uh, to uh, use? Well, we will take the spoon here and we will just uh, fill it up and then a little bit more. I would say kind of like that. And uh, there is uh, a little bit, as you can see, there is still a bit of uh, room in the spoon. So I think um, when I just do a little bit uh, like this, then uh, still it basically is not enough. But I think in order to show how this uh, stuff works, it might be uh, enough actually. But uh, we will just do a little bit more. So we get about what I would say is maybe more, uh, 1.25 uh, milliliter. So I would put it on uh, this side here and then we can see uh, the difference. So I would just take a uh, half of the amount here. So well, uh, something, uh, it is of course a little bit difficult but take the whole stuff out like this and then i will take half of that amount voila something around like that and then take the rest of the stuff off and then we just put it there on this side here so as you can see it goes on really really white and that is um of course the uh, titanium dioxide um, but i will say uh, when you smear it in it does uh, actually sink into the skin, but also at the same time, if I am in a sort of a, a white room, like my bathroom, and then uh, the sunlight is coming on, it looks like I have the same sort of color as uh, the walls, and they're white. So, um, but uh, it does, as you can see, starts to sink in relatively nicely, but um, yeah, uh, it has to go uh, on your eyelids as well, if you, unless you're using uh, shades so that um, you protect your delicate eye areas from uh, the sun rays. And now I have a shaved, but I will say when I used it uh, earlier I had not shaved and then um, it just simply uh, is really difficult, like with any uh, sort of a sunscreen really, particularly something that is uh, tinted, that uh, it is uh, really difficult to um, maneuver around your beard area. So, um, but uh, I'm pretty sure that the sun will actually hit your skin there. So um, unless you have a really, really big beard, then um, I mean, then it will maybe, um, yeah, it's not great with a uh, beard uh, and sunscreen it doesn't really mix that well so now um, I would say I have smeared most of the stuff in and uh, this is actually the sort of uh, amount that uh, you need uh, to use maybe this was actually not exactly enough a little bit difficult to divide it completely in halves uh, but um, yeah uh, something uh, like this now you can see the difference maybe uh, the way that it, it shines. This is supposed to go a uh, matte, but um, yeah. Um, I, I, uh, well, now I don't even, as I said, have uh, any sort of a cream uh, underneath, and there's still this. Um, I, I, I will not say that it sinks in really, really, really well, but um, sort of like. Um, I think if you have just washed your face, then uh, it will sink in uh, a lot better. Now, it was a little a while ago since I washed uh, my face, uh, even with something uh, that was very uh, gentle. Um, 
but I will say that after a while, because I'm using uh, something that is gentle on my skin, my skin will very quickly start to produce uh, those sort of things that are sort of like a, a little bit of sebum and uh, that sort of a uh, thing that uh, is supposed to uh, moisturize uh, your skin. And uh, when that has happened, then I would say uh, this does not sink in that well. So I think it's something that you need to put on straight away after you have uh, washed your face and then maybe it will sink in a, a whole lot better. Um, I have read that uh, some people that are saying that it rolls off and stuff like that. But I think uh, usually uh, when you're using a, a sunscreen and people are normally saying you should put it on top of your skincare. Well, uh, the thing is that with the skincare you have underneath a, a sunscreen is actually maybe sometimes what is uh, making a sunscreen not work that well and start to um, sort of uh, roll off and stuff like that. So if you have a lot of uh, stuff with the silicone going underneath uh, a sunscreen, then it might start to mix with that and sort of roll off and it might not uh, sink that well into your skin and, and so on and start to basically work with what you have underneath and then uh, maybe it will not act as the producer had intended it uh, to work. But... Um, I will say maybe when you look in this light here, you might not see a, a huge difference. I have a little bit of some warm light here, but I will say uh, when I just saw it uh, in daylight, it was kind of like, um, yes, I, I noticed there is a little bit of a hint of white on my face. And I'm pretty sure that if you have a uh, dark skin, it, it will be uh, it will be visible. Um, but um, also um, now it starts to sink in a little bit better i will say and obviously you need to give it a little bit of time before you judge if something is sinking in really really well or, or not but um i think um compared to other sort of a sunscreen which can be really really greasy i would say for the sort of a dry touch sort of issue i would say it's kind of like okay um it could be a whole lot worse However, if you are looking uh, on the uh, eyelids, then uh, you can actually see that uh, if you are out uh, in, in the rain, I was actually out in uh, the rain today and uh, there uh, I was out jogging and uh, the uh, sort of a uh, sunscreen, uh, the titanium dioxide, it will uh, collect uh, in the uh, crease line, I'm afraid. And it will also uh, collect in the beard area. And as I said earlier, it is uh, really difficult to smear a sunscreen probably into your beard area, even with that sort of uh, minor beard I had going on uh, today. So uh, that is uh, one of those things that you need to think about that uh, if it is uh, hot or humid then something like this it, it simply it will migrate and you can also see it uh, in some of the the lines uh, underneath uh, your eyes. So uh, if you are using the uh, correct uh, amount then that is something like that that will uh, simply happen. Now when I touch my skin uh, now it feels uh, better and better. It feels more and more sort of um, matte uh, or not greasy and uh, when I look in the mirror it feels like um, it, it looks really okay actually but I will say earlier today when I used uh, maybe more of this stuff so maybe a little bit more uh, as I should use and maybe now did not have enough on or something like uh, in that sense but if you are using uh, the correct amount uh, it, it will be uh, visible and uh, you might see uh, on some of the pictures that I have shown you that uh, depending on if you're using a flash or if it is outside and it kind of like it, it will look it differently but uh, there are other sunscreens that are pure uh, mineral based and they will obviously look a whole lot worse this is not a pure uh, mineral based uh, sunscreen it is a, a mix of uh, mineral uh, uh, screens uh, so uh, the titanium uh, dioxide and then uh, there is uh, some of these uh, modern filters in it uh, as well and there is also some of the old-fashioned uh, filters in it so it's quite a, a mix so a little bit of uh, all sort of things really but uh, yes I will say that uh, at the end of the day it does have a little bit of a uh, white uh, cast uh, to the skin and I'm pretty sure as I said if you have a, a darker skin tone than I have you will be able to see it if you are using the correct amount but uh, as such when when I sit here now it feels like um, it's kind of like okay but I would not use a, a moisturizer underneath because then it would be uh, a whole way too much and uh, it would not really work but um, yes it kind of like it uh, depends on the situation if you are running and you are sweating and stuff like that it will kind of like uh, move around and you will see that uh, 
the uh, titanium dioxide it will uh, collect in all sort of uh, crease lines i'm afraid so uh, but that is just uh, the thing that is with the titanium dioxide whether it is a nano or not or whatever it will always somehow show up uh, that uh, you have a titanium dioxide on your face so uh, is this something I'm going to buy again? No, it is not. Because if I want something that is a, a mattifying sunscreen, then I actually use one that is not a mattifying. Yes, it sounds uh, crazy, but um, what I do is that I simply mix a uh, silica into it uh, myself before I put it uh, on my face. You can also powder your face a little bit before with silica, and then you can put uh, the sunscreen on, and then you can just let it sit uh, a little while, and then you can just uh, go uh, a little bit over with the uh, silica. But uh, in general, with uh, a sunscreen, as I've said before, then uh, something like a titanium dioxide and a zinc oxide, if you see that uh, in a mixed with the uh, chemical uh, sunscreens then uh, they can actually uh, break down uh, the uh, chemical sunscreen so that is not really great and uh, the thing here is that uh, when you're using a product like this which has this sort of a uh, tendency to give uh, a white cast on your face and uh, you do as they say top up or reapply after an hour or maybe two hours yes you are going to look really really pasty and white in the face at the end of the day unless you are completely uh, taking off uh, makeup and stuff like that every time you are reapplying a, a sunscreen so yes um, i think that uh, a lot of the issue with uh, these uh, sunscreens that contain uh, titanium dioxide or zinc oxide for that matter is that uh, at the end of the day you will be very white uh, in your face if you are going to use it in the correct way so no i am not going uh, to buy uh, this one here again i'm afraid so uh, yeah that was my verdict uh, on this one here it's sort of like worked well in order to be non-greasy and stuff like that compared to really greasy sunscreens but uh, as such it is not something i'm going to buy again i'm afraid so yes if you would like to see more of this sort of videos please subscribe hit the bell and do all the things you do in order to be notified when i upload more of this sort of videos thank you for watching see you bye